the President Donald Trump was briefly taken to a White House bunker, amid protests outside the building on Friday night. While the annex of bunkers and tunnels under the White House are nothing new, they're rarely used by American presidents. Ever since the news came out, people are wondering, where is the secret bunker, and what other secret buildings inside the White House? Today, we are going to talk about the White House. The White House is the official residence and workplace of the President of the United States. The White House has stood as a symbol of the presidency, the United States government, and the American people. But the White House is not the only a white building that most people think. There are other ground buildings in a huge underground space. And the underground space can be used as a doomsday bunker during war or critical times. In 1776, people from the 13 colonies of North America, won the War of Independence under the leadership of George Washington. America was born. President Washington, together with the city planner Pierre L'Enfant, chose the site for the new residence, which is now 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Nine proposals for the new president's house were submitted, an Irish-born architect, James Holman won a gold medal for his practical and handsome design. The construction began on 1792, took place over a period of eight years, at a reported cost of $232,000, which is equal to $3 million today. Although President Washington oversaw the construction of the house, he died at his home after a brief illness and never lived in it. The building was originally referred to as the President's Palace, when the first residence President John Adams moved in 1800. In 1811, after the burning of the president's house, white paint was applied to mask the burn damage it had suffered. That is when people started to name the palace the White House, because of the color. It was not official name until 1901, President Theodore Roosevelt established the formal name, by having White House Washington engraved on the stationery. The White House official name was born since. The White House is not only a building, but constructed by several ground buildings. The typical ancient Greek architecture building is where people most familiar with. The side with a square triangle lintel is called the North Portico of the White House. And the side of the oval lintel is the South Portico of the White House. The South Portico is next to the famous South Lawn of the White House. This is where the press conference is held, and also where the Marine One, the President's helicopter takes off and land. Therefore, the exposure to the south portico of the White House is higher. And the famous presidential Oval Office is not in this well-known building, but somewhere else. Beside the main building of the White House, there are also West Wing and East Wing building on both sides. Let's take a look at the East Wing. This is a two-floors building. The second floor is where the First Lady and other employees work and the first floor is where the visitor entrance to the White House, instead of the main or back entrance of the White House building. After entering the building, you will see a front hall and further ahead is the garden room and a long corridor. Next to the corridor is a home theater, which is used by the President and his family to watch movies. Since the White House has undergone many renovations, the theater current decoration is red velvet color. Sometimes this room is used by the President to give a speech. Further forward to the end of the East Wing building will be the visitor foyer. From here you can enter the main building of the White House. There are total four floors in this building. In the middle of the first floor is the Central Hall. And the main entrance of this hall is where the Foreign Ambassador enters the White House. There is a one-lane bowling alley in the basement of the White House under the North Portico. Bowling is just one of the many recreational facilities presidents have enjoyed the use of at the White House over the years. Through the stairs, you can reach the second floor directly. The first room is a very big fancy ballroom for social gatherings and prom events. Then there are the other three rooms called Green Room, Blue Room, and Red Room. They are multifunctional rooms decorated with different colors. The decoration here can be freely designed by first ladies. For example, their green room was originally designed and decorated in a series of revival styles by the First Lady Grace Coolidge. Followed by Pat Nixon, and later Laura Bush also contributed in the decoration and renovation. 
however, every renovation will be carried out on the basis of the original room design. Large-scale renovation is prohibited. The blue oval shape room was designed by Jacqueline Kennedy, using French styles decoration. It is also known as the most elegant room in the White House. And the third floor is a close area where the president and his family lived. This floor contains bedroom, dining room, and various entertainment facilities. There is a sunroom, also known as the sky parlor on the top of the oval lintel. It is a comfortable place with a beautiful view over the Washington DC. It was a much simpler sunroom at the beginning, the purpose was to give the President William Howard Tuff and family a cool place to sleep on hot nights. The sunroom later expanded and redesigned to include kitchenette. The sunroom has been a particular favorite of many first family. On the left of the main building is the West Wing. While East Wing is the place for First Lady, then the West Wing is where the President and other employees work. There are many rooms on the first floor, and the biggest room is for the United States Secret Service. And the most important room in the entire White House is the Situation Room. It has the world's most advanced communication and command facilities, allows the President to conduct secure communications with outside. This is also the room where Obama and others watched the raid of Bin Laden in 2011. The Situation Room has all kinds of protections against surveillance with unique design, where the Air Force One has the exactly same design to evoke the same feel, textures, and sounds for the convenience and comfort of the President. The long room connects to the West Colonnade is the Press Crops Room. This is where the group of journalists, correspondents, and members of the media usually assigned here to cover the President, White House events, and news briefings. And the most important room on the second floor of the West Wing is the famous Oval Office, the President's Office. The office design can be freely decorated by the President including furniture and curtains. The oval-shaped office was designed by President Washington, where the office shape inherited from the earlier presidential palace in Philadelphia. The Oval Office Desk also known as the Resolute Desk. It was a gift from Queen Victoria to President Rutherford Hayes in 1880. The desk was built from the English oak timbers, of the British Arctic exploration ship, HMS Resolute. This image shows Caroline Kennedy, and Carrie Kennedy playing beneath the desk in 1963. The emergency buttons installed in almost everywhere in the Oval Office, under the table, by the sofa, or even in the drawer. Once the emergency buttons triggered, the White House Special Unit will immediately dispatch to protect the President. When the White House was first built, there was no secret bunker nor any underground building. Until the year of 1941, the first bunker was constructed under the East Wing building during Franklin Roosevelt's presidency, in the wake of the Pearl Harbor attack. In 1952, during Harry Truman's presidency, considering hegemony between America and Soviet Union are on the verge, plus the possession of the nuclear weapon in Soviet Union. President Truman made a major renovation and upgrade to a doomsday-ready bunker, with one meter thick in concrete wall, and able to fit up to 200 people. The secret bunker is known as Presidential Emergency Operations Center. It is completely isolated from the outside world, and able to provide up to 48 hours air, capable to defend against nuclear weapons, biological weapons and chemical weapons. There is also a decontamination room for disinfection purposes to remove radioactive, dust, or poison from human body before entering the main area. According to the media exposure of the 911 incident, it can be seen that the bunker has a room similar to the West Wing combat room. What if the entire White House is surrounded? In the underground bunker, there is a secret passage connects to the outside world so that the President can quickly escape. The tunnel is 232 meters long, and is connected to the underground vault of the Treasury Building Tunnel. Then through another tunnel under the vault that leads to a big red concrete building. The Secret Service vehicles will stand by here, and ready to transport President quickly to a nearest Andrew Air Force Base. There are two Air Force Ones are docking here, which can help the United States President escapes from current location, and fly to any place in the world. Beside the White House bunker, 
there are many other hidden underground buildings located in Washington. For example, the Cheyenne Mountain and Raven Rock are huge doomsday bunker that can fit more than thousands of people. The United States has more than 800 military bases in 70 countries. In other saying, the President of the United States has the most stringent security facilities and escape methods in the world. Regardless, the true danger is unavoidable. Those dangers can only be avoided by serving the people well, bring the people to stay great, and become even better. The sense of security must not build from iron warship or cannons, but it is the people long-term stability and prosperity.